Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today we're going to talk about masking in Luminar AI. Now, as many of you know, Luminar AI does not have layers in it like Luminar 4 did. And old timers like me always associate masking with layers. Well, there is a lot of different types of masking you can do that don't require layers. And that's what we're going to be talking about. Specifically, I have this image here. And let's say I just want to kind of add more structure to the sky. So I'll go to this structure filter and I'll turn amount up. So I'm going to turn that amount up, just to add that kind of structure to the sky. But I really don't like what it's doing to the water. So I want to mask it away from the water. And now there's a number of different ways I could do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the filter masks by clicking on this little like circle with looks like a pen tip in it and we open up the masking tools. And we have three different types of filter masks. We have a regular paint mask, they call it. That's a brush. You have a radial mask or a gradient mask. And I could probably use a brush and it'd probably be easier, but I'm going to demonstrate the gradient mask so you could see how that works. So I'm gonna click on that, and it's telling me to click and drag to draw a gradient. And I want it right on the horizon. So I'm going to just click and drag down, and you can see I'm drawing a gradient and I could tilt it any way I want. I could have pushed it up and made it an upside down gradient, or I could just flip it all the way around if I wanted it to be an upside down gradient, but we're not gonna do that. We'll just make it just a typical, like everyday linear gradient, like that. Now you could see where the red is, that's where the adjustment will affect. Where there isn't red, it's not going to affect those areas. So I'm just gonna pull it up a little more because I really don't want it affecting the water. And just to show you, I'll just max out this, and you can see how that is just affecting the sky now. It's not affecting the water. So I effectively applied a mask to this image for structure. This is called a filter mask. Many of the filters have masks, not all of them. For example, the light filter, there's no mask. The vignette filter, there's not a mask in. I didn't go through all of them, but I suspect there's others that don't have masks as well. But the next thing I want to do is I want to kind of brighten up uh, the lighthouse. The lighthouse is kind of dingy looking, right? So I'd go to light for that and like increase exposure, but there is no masking here. So what do I do? Well, that's when I'm going to use a local mask. To do that, you go over here to this local masking uh, button, click on that, and we're going to add a local mask. And there's two different types, just a basic mask, which has some basic sliders, and a texture mask. Obviously, I don't want the texture mask. We're going to use the basic mask. And again, we have three different types. We have paint mask, that again is a brush. I'm not sure why they just didn't call that brush, but that's a brush. Then there's the radial mask and the gradient mask. Now, I'm going to use the brush and I'm going to turn exposure up. All right, now you see how it's affecting everywhere? Well, we want it just to affect the lighthouse. So I'm going to make sure that I'm on the brush side. I'm gonna paint in the adjustment, not remove the adjustment. That's what the eraser is. So I'm gonna paint in the adjustment. Now we have the radius of the brush, that's just the size of your brush, the softness of the brush, and the opacity of the brush. I'm gonna keep the opacity at 100, softness at 100, and then I've got exposure up pretty high, just so I could see. I could readjust it when we're done. Now, as soon as I click once, I clicked with the left mouse button, you see it removed it from everywhere except where I'm painting on the lighthouse. And you could see that we're getting that red overlay. That's indicating that's the areas that will be affected by this basic local masking adjustment that I just did. I'm, of course, going to pull that down. Now, I overspilled on the, um, the edges of the um, lighthouse. You can see how it's affecting the um, clouds a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the eraser tool, and I'm going to pull opacity all the way down. So I have, or I'm going to, I'm sorry, pull opacity all the way up. I'm going to have softness all the way down. So I have a super hard brush, right? And I'll get a smaller one. I'll hit the left bracket key to get a smaller brush. A right bracket key makes it makes it larger, and I could just come in here and paint away wherever I see where I spilled over with that red a little bit. I'll just get rid of that there, there, and there. Just a little bit. See what that looks like? 
that's much better. I did kind of spill in still. Just in case. Let that kick in. Yeah, that's better. I could uh, get a smaller brush still and get in here and get these little edges. Yeah, let that kick in. Yeah, so I brighten that up fine. Now, there's other adjustments here. I could add structure right to that spot if I wanted to. Again, it's only going to affect right where I painted uh, with the brush. So um, I can make it really warm, really cool. So all these adjustments work here. Now you can see that under this local masking uh, panel, I have one adjustment, one basic adjustment. You could add up to 10. So I could add 10 of these. So if I felt the need to do another one, let's just say for the sake of argument, um, I typically wouldn't do this. But let's say over here, I want to increase saturation, all right? So if we go back to the Essentials panel and I go to Color, you can see I already use this. I already have satur or Vibrance down a little bit. See how I have Vibrance pulled down a little bit? So um, I want to, though, add a little bit of that color back here. So I could you go to Local Masking and add another basic adjustment, right? This time, instead of the brush, we're going to use the radial mask. And what we'll do, it's, it's telling me to click and draw, drag to draw a circle. So we're going to draw a circle right here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to these handles here, and I'm going to scrunch it over. Oh. Now you can see that where the red is, that's where it's affecting, which isn't where I want it to affect. And if I could get my mouse to work properly, there. You can see that it... Um, it, for example, if I just pick exposure all the way up, watch what will happen. See, it's affecting the wrong part of the image, right? So what I need to do is invert this mask. To do that, now I have it drawn here. Well, to do that, go to these three little dots and click Invert. Now, you'll see it's affecting this area right here. See? But I don't want to turn exposure up. All I want to really do is add some saturation. So I'll add some saturation there. Maybe not that much. But that's, I just wanted to give you, I probably typically wouldn't have done that on this image, but I just wanted to show you how to use a radial mask. So we have two different basic local masks. One, just to increase saturation here, where I used a radial uh, mask. Another, where I used a brush to increase the exposure on the lighthouse. And then I did use a filter mask under structure. I added structure to the clouds with a gradient mask and I didn't want it to affect anywhere else. And that is that. That's how you could do all this different types of masking in Luminar AI. Yes, there's no layers, but we can mask these adjustments onto parts of the image we want it to affect and mask it away from those areas we don't want those adjustments to affect. So I hope that helps you better utilize masking in Luminar AI. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>